handle the truth? That's the question today. You know, one of the greatest challenges, folks, that we have in uh, Christianity today is that we like only to believe the parts of the Bible that don't include our sins or don't again go against our assumptions, values, and beliefs. And Peter tackles this question in, in the book of First Peter uh, in our scripture reading today. And you're going to see um, Peter take this on because this is not only been a, a question of um, uh, back today, but it's, it's been a question for quite some time. So I want you to look at this as I read God's word here. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through, this is very important here, through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Okay, <clears throat> what I want you to understand here, the truth through the Spirit. So once we get saved, folks, and the Holy Spirit of God descends upon us, the Holy Spirit of God then, as we as God communicates to us through his word, and we must, and he, he doesn't necessarily uh, keep us from doing wrong, but like I always say, he prompts us to do what's right. Now, here's the thing, folks. We as Christians have a responsibility to teach, preach, and project the truth of God's word. And we've got to do this, folks. The good, the bad, the ugly, all of it for why we, we, we have a sincere love for the brethren. And here's what's happening, guys, um, in, in our culture today. And, in, in it's, and it's happening in the church today. And unfortunately, I think it's happening in a lot of Southern Baptist churches uh, as well. And it's happening in our Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, our, uh, we have, um, more than any other time in our history, this idea of objective truth is, is out the window. I mean, you watch Facebook, you watch Twitter, and if you say any other thing than the Marxist uh, narrative or the Democratic Party narrative, uh, then you're banned, you're blocked, you're bannistered. And then under the, under the auspice of, well, you're not loving your neighbor. You know, you guys, you saw this um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the COVID-19 uh, when we had that, and, and you know, you remember, you remember uh, all the the evangelicals elites, whether it was uh, uh, David French or Russell Moore or, or Ed Stetzer, saying that if you got the shot, you loved your neighbor. Okay, well, that, that doesn't say that in the Bible. Okay, but see, it, that fit the narrative of the time. It's a good example of that. Now, here's the deal. Here's what happens is because the culture is going to try to get us to not identify the objective truth, and this is why Satan hates the truth. He will do everything possible to hide truths, not only from the lost, but from the saved and the chosen. This is why Peter places emphasis and obedience and, and, and on this on purification. Because here's the thing, guys. Truth is grounded in the fall of humanity when the people, the sheer nature of the truth. You remember that movie, A Few Good Men, and this is one of the, this, the greatest scenes uh, that I've ever seen in a movie. And, and Jack Nicholson is playing an old Marine colonel. He's on trial for this harsh training methods. And he told the lawyer who is played by Tom Cruise, uh, uh, you can't handle the truth. And he, he jumps up and he says that. And he, he, was, he, he was wanting to show that those, those tough Marines and those soldiers who are on the wall, they love to have those Marines and those soldiers on the wall defending America, but, they don't, but then they want to question their methods, how they get them ready. And many times we like that objective reality, but we can't handle the truth. So, so one of the tactics that Satan uses is to discourage, yes, indeed, pastors from preaching the truths in the pulpit. And as well, you should preach politics. You shouldn't preach politics in the pulpit, Pastor. Now, who makes up that argument? I'll tell you who does. Satan. Satan does. You know, because here's the thing. It's okay to, uh, to have a, 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 a Grammy show where 12 million people watch Madonna and, and a bunch of Satan-worshipping uh, Mongols up there uh, trying to, uh, trying to uh, um, Neanderthals, uh, trying to, to worship Satan, all right? Now, let me just thank you. Just think this. 
but you're going to tell a pastor that he can't preach about abortion or he can't preach about the satanic influence on a culture or, or if you get in the culture wars, oh, preacher, you can't do that because that's politics. There are a whole lot of things you could preach about in the pulpit if you take away politics. You know, we can't discuss abortion or, or, or the opioid or the fentanyl crisis or, oh, yeah, but you can't now, now you can't discuss the gender changes to first graders or the concentration camps in China, okay, or the critical race theory and intersectionality that's being taught in our schools. I'm, should I separate politics from the pulpit? Absolutely not. Because we have to preach truths. I'm reminded of what the Apostle Paul said in Acts 20, 27, 28. For I have not shunned to declare you the what whole counsel of God. Therefore, take heed to yourself, to the flock among the Holy Spirit who has made you overseers, to the shepherd, to the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. You know, guys, Pontius Pilate did not kill Jesus Christ for what he did. He killed him for what he said. I will not for one moment, as a pastor or as a disciple of Jesus, succumb to the cowardice of not preaching the whole counsel of God. The problem with the American church today, we are far too much American and not enough church. And being enough church is being staying true to God's word. You know why? Because we can't handle the truth many times. Yes, we do live in strange times regarding how the church functions in America. And yes, I will just honestly tell you the Southern Baptist Convention, what we're seeing with the Saddleback Church and the church in Orlando and some, some other things that we've seen uh, are having this same problem right now. And what's happening, guys, is the church in America is trying to relate to a culture that has been immunized by Christianity. The great example of this is that that he gets us campaign. Okay, now the the idea of trying to find new ways to reach a loss is so honorable and it's compassionate. But when you have a website that you try to re-image God, you don't get a chance to re-image God. And then when you when you say things that are politically correct and politically popular, but you don't share anything about sharing the gospel, or you try to get uh, uh, when you don't share anything about the gospel and the true gospel of Jesus Christ, guys, that's wrong. And trying to find new ways to reach the loss, uh, we tragically are doing, uh, we, we're tragically uh, are misleading the lost, okay? Because it's like this. Are we asking, well, how do you want to come into the kingdom of God? Question. How do you want to worship God? What would you like for God's word to say? At some point, guys, we have to go back to the truth, all of God's word, all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly. We don't get to choose what's in this scripture. And at some point, we got to go back to God's way. We got imagine we had a campaign that's a blueprint for evangelism where we talked about the Bible, all of it. Yes. Whenever we uh, try to make the message attractive to the world, I'm going to tell you what happens, guys. Uh, we get in danger. We get in trouble. To the culture here in America, we must never, never negotiate the fundamentals of the Bible, of the Bible, worship, preaching, and the whole counsel of God. That's what evangelism is, and that's where you have spiritual growth. We can never forget the enduring truths. The human beings did not change with millennials or the generation X or Z or Y or even baby boomers, okay? Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook and the Internet and technology has, yeah, changed some things. But the fundamental nature of our humanity remains exactly the same when God created Adam and Eve. You know, my wife has been a teacher, uh, teaching school for about 30 years. And what she will tell you is that kids and those 30 years have not changed one iota. They have not. But the people that are raising them have. I want you to let that sink in for a second. The purification of our soul comes through the obedience of truth. This is why we have to handle the truth with the Spirit of God. The way we handle the truth is by obeying God's Word through the power of the Holy Spirit. One of my most frequent prayers is to God is to fill me with the Holy Spirit because if I have the power of the Holy Spirit, I, have, I can do His will. And then that gives us what? Willpower.
because when we have the Holy Ghost of God, we are obedient to God. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to, but the, what, the, what does the Spirit does? He intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. And that, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is how we go bold. God bless you. And that is a bold word from a bold book. God bless you, friends, and go bold.